Hello, we are Tara and Mike and we are 50 years old and we have no retirement at all. Saved what? up. Since when? What are we going to do? Oh no. This video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbook. We have quick and easy recipes your family will love to help you get in and out of the kitchen fast. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. Hello guys, today we are talking about what to do when you hit 50 years old and you do not have any retirement. I am going to be 49 this year. Mike is 51. And we don't have any retirement. We have no Roth IRA. We have no 401k. We have no mutual fund. We have no stocks, no bonds. We ain't got nothing. <laughs> so here's our situation. So the reason why our channel is called Living on a Dime is because that's what we did. We had to live on a dime for 20 years, basically. And we'll go into that story later of why our income was so low and all that. But the thing was, we had to decide, do we pay the electric bill or do we put money in a 401k? I know, I totally understand that you should start investing when you're 20 years old and that's the best way to do. And if you can do that, go ahead. But for us, we just did not have the money to do that. And so we are now at 50 years old and we have no retirement. So now we're at the point where we're kind of like, okay, what are we gonna do for this? Well, here's what we're doing. <laughs> well, first of all, we're not worried. We're not worried at all, actually. And here's why. We have worked the last 20 years to make sure that we have been debt free, completely 100% debt free, except for our house. And then in the last three years, we have been, let's see, three years, two years, two or three years, we got our house paid off and we are 100% date paid off. So we have a house that is valued at $400,000. And then we have our business and we have those two things right now. And what we are doing now is now that everything is paid off, now we are going to start saving. We have our business. It's doing much better than when Mike ever had a regular job with 401k or anything like that. So we have set ourselves up to be 100% debt free going into retirement. Now, as some of you know, we are looking to try and find another house. But we are really committed to trying not to get another mortgage to buy that other house, even though we're looking for something that's more expensive than what we have now because we need land. And here in Colorado and Wyoming, where we're looking, land is really expensive. And so we are doing everything we can to stay out of debt. Okay, so we have our house that's valued at $400,000. Yep. Now, we could sell our house and sell our business and move to a cheaper place to live, like Missouri or Kansas, and we could retire right now. We could put all that money, mutual funds, whatever, and we could retire right now. But... What are mutual funds? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but we don't want to live in Missouri or Kansas. But it's, it would always be an option if we had a catastrophe at this point in our lives. Yes. And we also have saved up uh, a fair amount of cash in anticipation that we might end up buying a more expensive house. Yeah. But now we're not really sure we're going to do that. So we do have that as well. And yeah. that would some be something that we could then sell if we had to, if there was a disaster in the future as well. Yeah. So here's the thing, guys. We could sell our house and sell our business and actually retire right now. We would have enough money that we could put all that money, invest it, and then we could live off of the 10% return and we would be fine. But we are looking for a better house. Now, what do you do when you get to 50 and you have no retirement? Okay, first of all, your retirement needs to be priority over your children's college. Yes. Now, <laughs> we're going to get a lot of flack about this, but let me tell you, it is not your responsibility to take care of your children's college. Now, Mike comes from a family that believes that, 
So I totally understand that there are some family systems that believe that. There are some financial people that preach that you are responsible for your children's college. I do not believe you are. Um, that is something new since about the late 50s, 60s has started where parents, before that, kids pay for their own college. Well, and there's nothing wrong with you paying for some of it for them. But in our estimation, when kids don't have any skin in the game, when they don't have any investment in it, then they don't respect it. Yeah. And so that we've noticed with our kids that when they work harder for something, then they really, they really do a great job. Yeah. So what I would do is if I had kids in college... I would be having them pay for their own college and all that money that would have gone to their college would go straight into our retirement. Also, this is the time if you have no retirement, you have to tighten up everything. And I know we're at that age, we're tired, we're worn out, but let me tell you, if you get to 50 and you have no retirement, you're going to have to buckle down anymore. And this is not the time to be saying, well, I've worked hard for the last 30 years. I deserve a boat. Or I've worked hard for the last 30 years. I deserve a vacation to, where's a vacation spot? Cozumel. I don't know. Cancun. <laughs> I don't even know where vacation place is. Well, you named two. <laughs> so this is not the time to be taking expensive vacations it's not the time to be buying boats. It's not the time to be buying houses you can't afford. This is the time to really buckle down and get your money situated for retirement and get ready for retirement. And I'm telling you, no eating out. Mom, that means no new purses, no getting your nails done, no highlights in the hair. This is where you have to buckle down. You've got 10 to 15 more years and you can really save up a lot of money. If even if you came up with 50,000 extra dollars a year, let's say the kids are out of out of school now and mom's at home and she gets a job, let's say she's making $50,000 a year and you're living on dad's income of, you know, 60 or something a year. That's $500,000 you could save over 10 years for your retirement. And that's not including if you invest that money in something as you go. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just the cash. So you're not going to be in that bad of shape if you start right now. The biggest thing is to make sure you get all of your debt paid off. And stop buying things on debt. Yeah. Stop using your credit card. Stop getting loans. You know, people are overextending themselves to the point where they can't even finance the toys that they want now. My son works at an RV place and he has people come in all the time, our age, and they're wanting to finance a $75,000 RV and they can't finance a $75,000 RV because they're so overextended. You have got to get your debt 100% paid off, including your house. And I know people are going to say, well, I get a tax write-off on my house. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so tax write-off is good if you have to have, if you if you can't get the mortgage gone right now, it's good to use Go the tax write-off. But to, to keep a mortgage to have a tax write-off is saying, I want to spend $100 so I can save $10. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. You get, for every dollar, I think you get 28 cents back on your taxes was the last number I heard. I don't Depends know. Depends on your income. Yeah, right? I don't know how how your income situates, but they say about for every dollar you spend in interest, you get back 28 cents. I don't understand why people cannot understand this concept. If I told you, give me $100 and I will give you 28 cents back, you would look at me like I lost my mind. If I told you, give me $100,000, and I'll give you $28,000 back. You would say, well, there's no way. Where's the rest of my money? But that's what you're doing when you give the money to the bank in interest. And then you go and write it off on your taxes. It, you, it's ridiculous, you know? So. Yeah, it's okay to do it if you have that already. 
but you shouldn't go into it because the thing about tax rate off is if you if you can write off twenty thousand dollars that means that you're spending a lot more than that to write it off when you write off something on your taxes let's say you buy something for a hundred dollars let's say you buy something for a thousand dollars you can't you're not getting a thousand dollars off your taxes because you bought something for a thousand dollars you are getting the amount uh, that you would have paid in tax on the thousand dollars that year as a write-off for that. Yeah. And only certain things even qualify for that. But when you're dealing with the house loan, you have more interest that you're paying constantly all the time. So if you have a mortgage already, then it's worth taking the interest off. But it's not worth buying a more expensive house so you can write off more on your, your mortgage. Because then you're spending more money in order to save less money. And you're only doing that because you've been advised by a person whose job is to get you more tax write-offs. But the thing is, tax write-offs don't say everything. Like for us, we had our mortgage, we paid it off, and the accountant said, wow, you have a less mortgage interest now for your tax write-offs. And we're like, yeah, but we don't have that huge bill on the house at all anymore. And we have more cash flow, more money that is coming in that we don't have to spend on that. Yeah. If your financial advisor is telling you to not pay off your house, I would find someone else because that person doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry. And even I know people will say, oh, you know, I have 2% interest on my house interest and I can get 10% investing it. No. What happens if, if Mike can't work or I can't do the, because I'm the face of the business, I can't do the business anymore. What if one or the other of us, something happens? Our house is paid off. We will not have to try to come up with as much money then to live on. It is really good security to have your house paid off. Then if someone has a heart attack or if someone becomes disabled, you do not have to worry about making that house payment. So you don't have to have as much money coming in to pay for it. And there's another thing on that. Uh, well, first of all, it is true that in some ways you can you can say, we've got this debt and we've got that debt and we're going to leverage this, we're going to leverage that, and somehow we maybe could make a little more money. There are ways that that might be possible. The problem is it doesn't take into consideration any unexpected circumstance. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, let's say you keep a big mortgage on your house so you can invest more in your 401k. But then the economy goes completely upside down and your 401k becomes va valueless. You've lost everything and you still have a massive mortgage on your house. Yeah. And this is the thing that I saw one time I was working at a job where we just couldn't afford for me to put anything into the 401ks. But uh, I had a lot of friends who had all this money in their 401ks. And when the uh, 2000, Eight. 2001 oh, yeah. uh, crash happened, then they lost like three quarters of their 401k. Wow. But we were paying off debt, and that debt was still paid off, even though the economy went completely upside down. So we were fine. So our thinking with a lot of this has been, I can put money in for something that's going to gain a small percentage of interest every year. And I understand if you do that for 50 years, then it'll become something valuable. But our situation was, we could put it in something that's going to make a small amount of interest each year. Or we could pay off our house, and then if the economy tanks, we still have all that value. We still own it. But if the economy tanks and the 401k goes to completely nothing, then you've got nothing there and you have no house. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's the thinking that we've kind of come in yeah. on. And now we're completely clear on all of our cash. We have no debt at all, yeah. and we have cash in the bank, and we have items of value like the house and the business. And the thing is, if you have an item like a boat or a car, its value completely declines to nothing while you own it. So it's not like you're going to sell the car in 15 years and almost for the same price yeah. that you have. A property, a real estate property or something like that will tend to, the value goes up and down, but it always has value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Action steps. If you're 50 and you have zero retirement, number one, get rid of every single debt you have, including your house. So if you have an RV, a boat, cars, whatever, you need to sell those things until you can get enough cash saved up to pay cash for those things. You need to get your house paid off. You need to sell your house if you can't afford it and get something smaller. Get that debt completely paid off. 
then you are not going to buy boats, you're not going to buy RVs, you're not going to go on vacation, you're not going to buy new cars until you get that investment built up, you know, $500,000, $600,000, however much you think you're going to need to live on. Then after that, you can start saving money. But here's the thing. A lot of families earn $100,000, $150,000 a year. And they live paycheck to paycheck. And they live paycheck to paycheck. That's an enormous amount of money to just throw out the window. You can live on forty dollars or $50,000 a year. Yes, you can. And put, sink all that money. If you put $100,000 a year for five years, you'd be set. And then just keep adding to it for the last five or eight years, however long you're going to continue to work. Now, here's the other thing. If you hit your 60s and you don't have enough retirement built up, you are not going to be able to retire. And you're just going to have to realize this was my fault. I screwed up. I'm going to have to keep working. If I can't get this stuff saved up so that I can live within my means, you may not be able to retire. So at 50, you really need to make sure that you're pulling up your bootstraps and getting this stuff paid off. So anyway, that is our plan. We have everything paid off and now we are dumping everything we can into savings to build our retirement so that we can hit 60. And then if we want to retire, we can, you know, like I said, we could retire now if we sold our stuff and moved to a cheaper place, but we don't want to live in Kansas or Missouri. No offense. Just don't like the heat and humidity. Love the people. People are really nice. The heat and humidity is not. <laughs> so anyway, that's your action plan. If you're 50 and you have no retirement either, you still have time and you can get it together and get your debt paid off. If you guys need some ideas on how to earn more money, please go check out our video up here. 50, I think it was 58 ways to earn extra income. Please visit us at livingonadime.com for more ways to save money and get out of debt. And we will see you guys next time.